It's budget time this week with a company I haven't reviewed yet. So let's check out a rifle from the Beretta Holding Company. Just a quick thank you to the very supportive Vector Air for the loan of the guns today, without whom I couldn't possibly bring you the reviews I do. They are fastly becoming the go-to air gun shop in the North East Midlands. The details and the links are in the description box below. <laughs> Hello and welcome to AAR on Air. This is indeed a first for me. I don't think I've reviewed a Stoger before, so I'm really looking forward to this one. It is definitely in the budget category, but the initial thought is they've gone a little bit further than some companies with a similar product. Let's get into the walk around and show you exactly what I mean. To start with, let's look at the stats. This is 1,040 millimetres or 41 inches long and tips the scales at 3.1 kilograms or six pound 15 ounces with the included fitted scope. And to be perfectly honest, it feels much lighter than that. It is a traditional rifle design and is pretty much all black with hints of the Stoger corporate blue with a splash of green thrown in subtly for good measure. It does feel as though there has been some incestuous activity within some Snowpeak Artemis family members, but the end result is quite noticeably different in quite a few areas. From the front, there is an oversized silencer, which to be fair, does a pretty good job at keeping the volume and the tone down which is a pretty good job, really, because this isn't removable. And it is indeed bonded into place, but that's fine because it's included and it works. The barrel is around 450 millimetres long and is available in 177 or 22 calibres. Below this is the air tube. Probably easier to see this way around which is quite thin and unlikely to give you hundreds of shots. But I would say from its 200 bar fill, you could stretch this out to maybe 60 shots, depending on which calibre you choose. The gauge is on the pointy end and is a smaller Stoger labelled colour coded yellow, green, red item. There is a filler probe dust cover to keep any dirt out, which is a nice idea. The stock is all black and polymer and it must be said it does feel very durable. It has a style all of its own and is really very different but without going too radical. It is a pistol grip thumb hole design which pretty, pretty much precludes thumbs up shooting. The stock is very grippy for all weather use and this flows through to either of the two grips included in the box. Put it the right way around. Yes, there is an option to change the grips to the one that suits you most. The cheek rest is also replaceable with a higher and lower option in the box. This one is fitted with the higher option at the moment and that just suited me better. Always nice though to have choice. The butt pad is fixed but nicely rubberized for comfort. You can however remove different layers to move it forwards or backwards. The one thing that I still have the jury out on is that mini side rails that are designed to take a separate side leg bipod arrangement. Not a favour of mine because this really spreads the footprint out wide and makes it difficult to put in bags or cases. There is no bottom fitment though for a standard fit bipod, which I would expect someone will fabricate something for it anyway. For me, it's not a deal breaker because I shoot off the Rockstad tripod anyway. The trigger is a two-stage item 
and at this budget price i have to say is really quite easy and comfortable to use it is not match grade but more than good enough the safety is a push through item push from left to right right to left and it's in front of the trigger and it is very easy to use right to left puts it into fire the bolt action is really quite a shock what they've done is add a 45 degree paddle and this makes one action cocking simplicity itself now that's a nice touch and it's decockable it comes with two magazines and a single shot tray and one of those bipod leg holders also has a magazine holder built into it at this point it's only fair i tell you that it does work but i feel with real movement and risks of knocking it around you're going to finish up losing a magazine or two because though although there is a magnet to hold them in place i really wouldn't want to rely on it personally and to me it also ruins the lines of this little gun now this comes with an included three to nine by 40 scope usually something i class as a starter scope and suggest people change it at their first opportunity however this is quite usable can even be focused as low as 10 yards which suddenly improves this scope's credibility a little don't get carried away it's still a starter scope but one that is much better than most the reticle inside is still very basic and there is no hold over or hold under indicators or possibility and the turrets are not lockable but it is still an improvement on many of the other budget scopes that people throw in okay so far pretty good let's get this to two caliber over the chronograph and see what the sub 12 foot power 12 foot pound power level is like shall we using 15.89 grain pellets it saw 576 feet per second which is 11.71 foot pounds or 15.88 joules so there is nothing wrong with that making this capable of target work or pest control time to get this out on the range i will be using the supplied and included scope and shooting out at 40 meters which is a stretch for a 3 to 9 by 40 scope but let's give it a go anyway shall we well what about this one the stoger xm1 rifle because there's a bullpup as well which i've already tested and that'll be out later the XM1, it's got more of a 900 feel to it, without a shadow of a doubt. It's obviously where this is a love child of, and but they've made quite a few subtle differences to it, apart from the stock. But you've got more adjustability on this than I don't know what. It's, it's amazing. If you can't get this to be comfortable for you, for a budget rifle, it, it's, it's, a, it's a bad day. It has a silencer that is fixed. You can't remove that. It comes with a single shot tray, two magazines. This is a 2-2 version. And what I'm going to do, just to give it its fighting chance, I'm actually going to shoot it from the single shot tray. Although, what I have done when I have been shooting it, I've shot it from the magazine and the results have been pretty good. This one comes with a Stoger Air Guns 3 to 9 by 40 scope, but it's focusable. Yeah, it's the old style on the end rather than on the side wheel, but it is focusable, so you shouldn't have any parallax issues, so I'm comfortable to use it. It is a bit of a shock because it's only to 9 times magnification. We're shooting out at 40 metres here, so it's a bit of a challenge. So if we aren't all in the same hole, come on, give it a give it a bit of a break it has these bipod things on the side these rails but it, it it spreads it out really really wide i don't care for it personally and if you're going to try and then put it in a case it's not going to fit there's also got the holders on the end 
I don't think I'd bother because they're a bit loose and you're going to finish up losing the magazines. The magazines are not expensive, but why do you want to be losing them anyway? So I wouldn't do that. I'd keep them in your pocket and personally I wouldn't bother putting those on at all. It's dead easy to fill. You're not going to get huge, huge amounts of shots, but let's see what we can do. I've just put the higher cheek piece on, different grip, left the rear as it is. 2-2, so it's not the best target gun for 40 metres, but we'll give it a go. Let's see what we can do, shall we? Single shot try, Andrew. Scope is adequate. I mean, it's more than adequate, to be fair. And if you're doing a spot of pest control with it, then you don't really need much more than a nine times anyway, if you're fairly close up. It's not a bad trigger, but what I've been using today, some other guns, it does feel a little long, but it's not a bad trigger. I think I pulled that one slightly. It's difficult to see, to be fair. Nice thing to use. It's quite enjoyable. Yeah, it's probably not putting pellet on pellet, but it's uh, it's quite a comfortable and enjoyable thing to use. I'll put one more through. See how it goes. Very easy single shot tray to use. Yeah, safety on. Let's go and get that, see what it looks like. Come on, that's not bad. That's really not bad, is it? On a three to nine scope, out of 40 meters, the biggest bulk of it is in the center, a couple either side. No, I don't think that's bad at all. Don't forget, these are budget guns, but they're budget guns with a bit of style. There's just, there's just something else about them. And as much as if you want to get this to super, super target work, then yeah, you're better off buying a 177 and maybe changing the scope. But for you to buy as a kit, one off with all the ancillaries, build a bare bits, then I don't think that's bad. And 177, 22, you're easily going to take out some pests. No problem at all. Some, some of your pigeons, your rat work, whatever it may be that you've got messing about and messing your garden up. It's not a bad little rifle at all. Yeah, I don't think I'd bother with the bits on the front. Personally, it's a personal thing. Different people would say differently. And yeah, if you want a different, different grip, different cheat riser, you've got the options. It's all about options. And for the money, I don't think that is bad at all. Nice little rifle. Back to the studio. You know, this is pretty well loaded for a budget rifle. Yes, the shot count isn't going to be massive, and it is basic on the engineering, but it works, and has so many options, and a half-decent starter scope. If you're restricted on your budget, or want to introduce your teenage kids into the sport without risking too much capital, then this XM1 should be on your shortlist, in my opinion. The price, well, this little lot will set you back around £250 UK, which is really good value. I've enjoyed my first review of a Stoga and hopefully you have too. I will be looking at the Stoga XM1 Bullpup in the very near future too. Please 
give us the old thumbs up, subscribe, share, click the alarm notification bell, and of course, as always, check out this little lot. There is the AAR On Air website to take a look at, and of course, a big thank you to Vector Air for getting hold of this for me to review. As always, any of the items used in the reviews, apart from the gun itself, because I'm not allowed to do that because of YouTube rules, are in the links in the drop-down box below. The biggest thanks goes out to you guys for supporting the channel. Please stay safe and shoot safe. And hopefully, I'll see you all next week. Bye for now.